hello friends welcome to this tutorial for rate limiting with bucket 4j so in this tutorial we'll learn what is rate limiting how bucket 4j we can use so i will also be explaining with one example so where i have created one spring boot application where i will be using bucket 4j along with mysql and redis yeah let's see what is API rate limiting? What are the problems we face when we don't have a rate limiting feature in our application? Yeah, let's see. Rate limiting is a strategy to limit access to the API. Here we can limit the access to the API like how many number of times a client can call the API in per minute or per hour here we can decide it restricts the number of api call that a client can make within a certain time frame like example in a one minute uh, you can call 10 number of times or 100 times example like that this also defends api against overuse both unintentionally or in a malicious way for this example i have i will be using a bucket 4j library it is one of the library which provides a rate limiting well other libraries like resilience 4j or any external uh, api gateway also provide same type of a feature but for this tutorial i will be using bucket 4j so what is actually a bucket 4j bucket 4j is a java rate limiting library based on token based token bucket algorithm okay so bucket 4j is a thread safe library that can be used in either a standalone java java application or in a clustered environment so we can uh, use it in a cluster environment how uh, with redis in this example i will be using redis to explain how uh, we can uh, consume uh, consume the token and how we can use it okay it's also support like uh, in memory or a distributed cache or jcache so this is i i was telling like uh, i will be using redis for this purpose yeah now let me explain about to token bucket algorithm because bucket 4j is based on token bucket algorithm so let's suppose we have a bucket where six tokens are there and we have a application uh, which has some exposed API and client is trying to access the API now let's see what happens first client will try to get the token if there are enough token mint like then uh, client can call the API uh, and we can see this token will be removed so there is a uh, like a setting like a uh, uh, token six to six token will be alive for a minute or an hour so there is, we can do the setting like that okay if there are no tokens then user will get too many requests so we won't be able to call the api so here i'm explaining in terms of a boxes like a api and token so all together you can assume this api and backend it's a spring boot application the upper one where you can see the tokens it's a uh, it's a it's a redis where we can uh, consume the token yeah so uh, what is actually a token bucket algorithm as requests are consuming tokens we are also filling them at the same rate like uh, like i said earlier uh, for a user for a user like uh, we set the limit as per minute a user a can consume 100 requests okay so in a within a minute if the user user a sends more than 100 requests so he will get uh, 429 too many request error and we can also define like a user a 100 user b 200 like that also we can do so in this in the in the next part later part i will in a spring boat how we can achieve this i will explain yeah now let's check the code part how it is being done so i have already created this project i will be explaining it first let's check the pom.xml so pom.xml is pretty simple actuator data jpa i have added it spring web 
Redis and Spring Boot start to. So this is the library to connect to uh, Redis. Bucket 4J, this is the library for Bucket 4J. Here we need to include EHCache because we will be using Jcache. Spring uh, MySQL connector. And let's check the configuration, Redis config. So this is the config for Redis. It will be connecting to Redis. This is the bean where cache manager I'm creating it and cache manager. So this cache I'm creating it and this is a user list. Okay, so I will be explaining it how it's being used. Okay, so this first cache is being used to store uh, buckets. Second is the user list where I'm caching the user list where the users I have kept in uh, MySQL. Okay, and this is the proxy manager. Uh, which is being used uh, for bucket 4j okay let's move on and let's check the service i will show you this rate limiter is the service so this is the important class so this is the resolve method and this is the config supplier config uh, supplier for user key this is the user id first we'll fetch the user id okay from uh, uh, user repository then uh, here what we are doing is we are doing a refill so here we are getting the user limit okay so I will show you the this user this is user rate is the uh, database table where I have kept a user ID name and the limit limit is the integer part okay and here we can see this what is the limit per minute okay in one minute what is the limit and this is the bandwidth object where we have to pass the refill and finally it is going to return this bandwidth configuration and with this proxy manager dot builder dot build so key is the user id i am creating this bucket okay and this proxy manager will be using this cache to store buckets and this is we can say it is a distributed cache okay Yes, now let me show you the DB table once. So sample is the database, user rate is the DB table. So these are the records, okay, with the limit, three records with two, five and 10, okay. And uh, let me show you some other files, okay. And user service, okay. So where I will be fetching the users, okay. And user, this is the user repository, it is pretty simple. So user service, I have used the cacheable, okay. And this this cacheable, this username I have defined in Redis config, okay. This is the this is why I have defined it here. And uh, this is used because for every request we need to fetch the user, uh, we need to check the user limit, and uh, for that we cannot hit the database, and we will be using uh, Redis for that. Okay. The second thing is cache evict. Okay, so it will evict the cache every every 30 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever we can configure here. Okay, so this is done for that. Okay, so let's see the other part. Model object I have shown. Okay and this is the user controller v1 okay but now the thing is how we are using bucket 4j okay so let me show you this main thing for that i have written a filter okay so once per request filter okay what it will do is for every request which is starting with v1 okay so it will uh, uh, it will check for the bucket okay for other requests v2 we are not checking it it is kind of a unsecure api okay so which uh, which is free api which everyone can use it like this is the example okay and then here we are checking the tenant or okay. tenant can be user id so this is for the example i am uh, showing it okay if this is not blank then what it will do is bucket uh, uh, dot resolve bucket so here let's see what is happening it is trying to get the bucket here okay and uh, it this uh, it uh, method will return the bucket okay and with this bucket will 
use this method try consume one means like uh, I want a token one token okay so if this is successful means like then we'll execute the API else will show you too many requests and these are else cases like where tenant ID is not passed and we will be returning the forbidden uh, request and uh, rest of the things are very simple yeah now let me show you how it works so this is the application dot properties where uh, it is pretty simple I have specified uh, support a9090 db uh, db credentials okay and this is the uh, TTL I think it is 30 minutes okay here we can see okay so it is already evicted okay it is evicting the data evict user list so server I have already started it now let's test it okay I'm cleaning it this is the postman okay header x tenant one so one is having two limit two API calls per minute okay okay one call two calls successful the third call you can see 409 too many request okay so let's check for second user second user is uh, second user five uh, five calls allowed one two second call third call fourth call fifth call yes now you can see 409 okay and even if we uh, remove this we'll get 401 meant like as we have seen a forbidden in the filter okay so this is just an example uh, to show you how we can uh, uh, set different limit for a user meant like a, this is i am setting the i am sending the user in in case of a header so there can be many other options like okay uh, which can be done so this is just an example to show you how it is working and uh, this is a sql script which is a table script which which is already checked in and i will be check in the code on uh, github repository so you can download and uh, and use it for your own purpose okay okay thank you for uh, watching this video yeah, have a good day bye bye